Morning guys, so today we've docked in Lanzarote, which is one of the Canary Islands, so geographically that puts us just <laughs> course. Yeah, so this morning we've docked in Lanzarote, which is another port that I have never been to before, so this week's been very good for that actually, and that every single port that we've been to has been new for me. So it's really exciting to be back in a, I guess, a post-Covid world where we can get back on these ships and go to parts of the world we haven't seen before. I'll just turn around because there's an alarm going off up there, but plan for today, so I'm going to catch up with you properly back down in my cabin, but as you know, I am staying on the inside of the ship, so I don't have a window, so I always come up here first thing in the morning to have a walk around, see what the weather's like, on the way to breakfast, which is where I'm going now, so we'll go in there, have a bite to eat, and I will see you guys back down in the room before we head out. Okay, so I'm now back in the room, ready to get off the ship. So, when you arrive in any port, you've usually got two options for getting off the ship, right? Option one is that you can book an official excursion where the cruise line will usually bring a bus to the ship. It will then take you to the attraction and it will then bring you back and you'll normally get like a lunch or a breakfast or whatever time of day it is, you'll get like some form of snack included in that. Now, option number two, which is what I definitely prefer doing on this type of cruise, is just throw your backpack on, walk down the gangway, and just walk until you get tired and see what's in the town or the city that you've docked in that day. So that is my plan for today, to just see what's around this area. I also have a rule where I'll always try and buy at least something, literally anything, when I get to a port. Now, whether that is a glass of beer, a bottle of water, literally anything, because my genuine belief is that if everyone on the ships gave a euro or two euros or whatever into the local economy it would really really help these towns and villages that we arrive on these massive big ships in so yeah that's my general rule now to that end when i was looking at the daily schedule last night before going to bed i noticed that i mean it says on here that the part of lanzarote that we are docked in today is not particularly well known for like tourist attractions so i don't really think there's going to be much here at all but Hey, it's worth exploring somewhere new, I guess. Um, there is a microbrewery though, and I would absolutely be up for heading down to a microbrewery and for the sake of supporting the locals, having a beer. So <laughs> hopefully we'll find that later on when we're um, wandering about the town. Now, other than that, I think that's probably all that I need to catch up with you on right now. We should probably head off the ship. So look, we're gonna go back out on the decks because I need to go to the buffet to fill up my coffee cup before we get off. And um, yeah, I'll see you as we get off the ship. Okay, so just heading down now to get off the ship. And I always think you can tell how good a port is going to be by the number of people who are actually staying on the ship and also the number of other ships that join you. So you can see over there, that Ada ship that was with us in Tenerife, I think, is back with us again today. I'm actually very interested. I've never cruised with them or even thought about cruising with them. I think they are, well, they must be a German link because I've got a .de um, website on the ship. But if you've ever cruised with them, let me know, are they worth giving a try? Because the ships look beautiful. Um, but yeah, the other point about um, like how many people are staying on the ship, I'll try and show you up here. I mean, this section here would normally be covered in loungers on like a busy sea day, but obviously it's all clear. And then if I turn around and show you the like one of the main pools, you'll hopefully see through that glass at the moment. Yeah, you can kind of. Nobody is there. <laughs> all those loungers are out. Nobody's on them. And weather-wise today, it's about, what, 21, 22. Yes, it's cloudy, but the sun's still coming through. And being British, <clears throat> we would be on those beds, even if it was raining. So <laughs> let's get off this ship and have a, a wander around Lanzarote. And from there, it was all the way down to deck number five to get off the ship. Now, if you've seen my other videos from this series, then you're probably fed up hearing me talk about just how good this ship looked for Christmas. Now, 
honestly, every single room you went into on this ship, whether it was a restaurant, whether it was a bar, whether it was the atrium, or even a lot of the hallways, there was a Christmas tree in the corner of that room. <laughs> now, as you can see here, the atrium was fully decked out, which yeah, looked absolutely fantastic. Now, I said earlier the gangway was on deck five, and I know that quite a few of you guys are interested in these videos to understand more about the accessibility of ships and ports. And as you can see here, this ship on this day was really, really easy to get on and off. It's part of the joy of having a gangway on a lower deck is that, yeah, it's pretty easy to get on and off due to the fact that there's not a steep gradient. Now, when you get off the ship, you'll see that on the right hand side there, you've got the buses that take you along to the town. Or you can follow this little sign, which if you dock in Lanzarote, you'll find out that this footpath will take you all the way to the city centre. Right, so just heading into the town now, and one thing that was definitely worth mentioning, because they did warn us on the ship, if you come to Spain, they tend to observe like a siesta here, which is basically a nap in the middle of the day. Now, round about here is usually about one o'clock-ish, but it can be anywhere between one and three. And during that time, the town will pretty much shut down. So just double check before you get off your ship that everything's actually gonna be open. So there actually isn't a huge amount going on here. I mean, it's more one of those little ports that it's quite nice to get off the ship, just explore somewhere new, um, grab a couple of drinks, walk around the shops, that kind of thing. Apparently, there's some good beaches around here though. So I am gonna, before I go for um, the microbrewery, I am gonna head down to the beach and try and get a little bit of sun. So I think apparently it's only five minutes down here. So let's go down. Okay, found the beach. So my plan now is to get down there and just chill, probably grab a bite to eat and head down for, well, probably a good hour or so. I'm looking forward to this. Now, tip if you're coming here, this building behind, which I'll put the name of it on the bottom of the screen now, is, um, I think it might only be the only five-star hotel around here, but it is really, really nice. I've just jumped in for a coffee. Um, it was a little bit awkward to whip my phone out and film, so I decided not to do that but definitely have a look on their website. Don't need to book it, it's dead quiet. Um, and actually for five stars, really not that expensive. So definitely worth a punt if you are coming over here on a cruise. Okay, so I actually think I've just eaten enough tapas to feed a family of eight. So I am now on the beach, which it's absolutely deserted. So, I mean, our ship isn't full this week, but 
you would still think with us plus another ship, that's a lot of people that would fancy going to the beach. I mean, it's like 24 degrees, so it's perfect weather for it. I mean, I'm not complaining to have the beach to myself. If anything, I would definitely rather have that. Um, but yeah, look, I'm just gonna perch here for, as I say, an hour or so, and then think about heading, heading back to the ship and maybe get a beer on the way. Okay, so I've got about an hour and a half now before the ship is, well, before all aboard time. And that to me is more than enough time to squeeze in a beer at this microbrew that we spoke about earlier. So I'm really hoping that it's open and I'm also hoping that it's good. It's, I think it's quite rare anyway for a cruise line to recommend something like that just on the daily schedule. So yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be worth the, worth the walk up. Now, yeah, I always forget how much, obviously I was on the beach earlier on and I always forget how much I love a beach day. Um, I didn't grow up anywhere near a beach, so I always think when you go there and you just sit down, you completely switch off from the world, which is lovely. Um, but yeah, time for, definitely time for a beer because my watch is saying that today we've walked about six and a half kilometres so far, so definitely worked it off. So let's get up this hill and hopefully grab a drink. Right, p and you're not filling me with hope with this recommendation. Um, back there was like beautiful, almost like Greek, like whitewashed blue buildings everywhere. And here, I mean, this is like now what feels like the industrial area across from the port. I'll be amazed if there is actually any form of microbrewery here, but if you, I mean, if you look behind, there's not actually anything, <laughs> there's not actually anything here. And there's also nobody here, so. Yeah, watch this, watch this space. Maybe I'm gonna turn this corner and there'll be something here, but as I say, I'm not filled with the most, not filled with the most hope at the moment. Okay, I have an update for you, which is an update that I definitely wasn't expecting to be giving you, especially given what's going on behind. But I have now found the brewery, and here it is. <laughs> Not ideal, it's, I mean, it's 20 past three. So I, I mean, it can't, it can't have shut down because, well, two reasons. Number one, there's a van branded outside, and number two, there's a fresh, <laughs> a fresh baguette hanging on the door, which would suggest that that opens every day. So annoyingly, no beer. Um, yeah, maybe one to check. If you do go by the recommendations on the daily schedule, maybe this is a lesson just to make sure it's definitely open before you go. Um, but yeah, I guess for me, it's time to get out of this part of the town and go back to the ship and get a beer there. Maybe that's actually a sales technique where if you get in the mood for a beer, you'll then buy one as soon as you get on the ship. So on this occasion it's worked. So I'll see you back down at the port in five, 10 minutes. So that's me back at the ship, and I actually can't believe I'm saying this after all that blowing tapas I had earlier, but I'm looking forward to getting on here and getting a bite to eat, and to be honest, just getting on a sun lounger by the pool for a bit. 
So just going through security now and then we will be on. So I'll see you on there. So that's us now back on the ship. Um, we should be ready to leave in the next maybe 10 minutes or so. The gangway is now off and they are about to take the ropes off, which is good. Now, tomorrow morning, the ship docks in Tenerife, but that's not when I get off. I'll be on for one more night. So the ship essentially becomes a floating hotel for the night. And then I get off the following morning. Um, but yeah, I'll catch up with you properly on that back in the room and let's go and enjoy um, sailing out Lanzarote. Just like that, we are off. So the weather tonight couldn't be much better, as you can see. A little bit windy, but it usually always is when you sail out. Now, just had an announcement to let us know that the weather tomorrow is to be 23 and sun all day, which is excellent news for our final day on board. But hey, look, let's get down to this pool at the back, chill for a bit, and I'll catch up with you guys back down in the room. That has been such a quick day. Unfortunately, today was going really well until I arrived back to find that hanging on the mail hook outside, which looks as though I've never actually done a fly cruise with PO, but this will be essentially all the documents that I need ugh, to leave the ship. Yes, yeah, so it's got like luggage tags and boarding passes and all that in there. So yeah, what I'm gonna do in my video tomorrow, I'm actually gonna walk you through this because I, well, I currently have no idea what to do with it. So <laughs> I, I would imagine if you've never done a fly cruise, you'll be in the same position. So hopefully some of you will benefit from a, a quick walkthrough of the contents of that. Other thing I have found out, so this letter was also there and the letter basically has like a list of all the flights. So I go back to the UK, what time you meet and then what time you arrive back in the UK. So that is good. Unfortunately for me, going back to Birmingham, our meeting time was the first out of everyone on the entire ship. So yeah, we we're gonna be the first group off on Saturday, which was very sad, but we're not going to think about that yet because it's only Thursday at the moment. So we've got plenty of time to, to mourn going home. Um, but yeah, so plan for tonight. So I'm ready to go for dinner now, as you can tell. And to be fair, tonight will be a pretty to, tonight will be a pretty easy one. Um, dinner is at eight thirty, and it's already eight fifteen, so almost dinner time now. And then after that, it's just going to be the show in the theatre. So tonight it is like a three-person vocal act. Yep, and it's like Soul and Motown. So that should be to be fair, that should be quite good. I'm actually really looking forward to dinner. I've found the quality of food on this ship this week to be a lot better than what I saw in Arcadia a few weeks ago. Um yeah, I think I'm I think I'm maybe falling back into love with the P and O Cruise product. It's um it's been really, really good this week or from a food perspective. Um but yeah I'll cover that in more detail in another video. But look, I guess we should probably head down to the dining room now before I end up late. Um hopefully you've enjoyed a quick look round Lanzarote, albeit the brewery wasn't open, but hopefully you've enjoyed the rest of it. 
Um, if you have, then please think about subscribing to the channel and sticking around for more. My next video will be my final day on board and disembarkation. I think I'll probably merge them both together to be one video. So tomorrow I'll be taking you ashore in Santa Cruz in Tenerife. And then the following day, but we're not talking about it, I'm going to be going back home to Birmingham. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll see what we can capture from that day as well. Um, while you're down there to click subscribe, if you could give the video a thumbs up, that would be amazing. Um, and on that note, I'm going to go for dinner. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch up with you real soon. Thanks guys. Bye. So I thought tonight was just going to be a normal dinner like every other night. However, we turned up to the dining room and the table was fully dressed for a Christmas dinner, which I really, really, I thought it was just such a good touch. So the whole menu, which I'm showing you now, was all branded like Step Into Christmas. There was crackers on the table, there was hats. Um, yeah, just really, really liked this one. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to tell you my Christmas cracker joke, which was on the screen now. Um, what's the best Christmas present in the world? A broken drum, you just can't beat it. So yeah, not my words from the inside of the P&O cracker, so don't sigh at me. <laughs> now, quality of food tonight, really, really good. So you can see from the menu exactly what I ordered. So I've got my starter here. We then move into my main, and then finally we close off with um, probably one of the best desserts that I've had on the ship. You know those puddings that you eat? Doesn't look that fancy actually, but when you eat it, it just disappears. It was so, so good. Anyway, look, that's it from me today. In my next video, we're going to be arriving back in Tenerife, and I'm going to be showing you how you can go somewhere like this on the screen for, what, less than 10 euros a head. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, tune in to my next video, and I'll take you out on a tour around Tenerife. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.